Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode in the three-part series of Understanding Gardening Terminology. So the first word we're going to talk about in this series is NPK. Everyone always says, man, the NPK of my soil, man, or the NPK of my fertilizer. What is NPK? So instead of just saying NPK a thousand times, I'm going to break it down into actually what it is. N P and K stands for nitrogen, P is phosphorus, and K is potassium. Now K is a, is a unique one because of the fact that it actually uses the letters that tie in from the, ta the periodic table of elements. So these are nutrients that you're going to be adding to your garden. They're basically just abbreviations that were given to identify these elements. So if you look at a periodic table of elements, you're not going to see P for potassium or PT for potassium. You know, those, those would be other ones. Um, but basically you have P as your phosphorus. So it just shortens things up. You have your N being your nitrogen. And that ties in again to the periodic table. You will find all of those on the periodic table, just like magnesium is mg it's just a quick way of saying something that you know everyone knows what it is but it can be confusing because when i first started gardening everyone was like what's your mpk I'm like what's my what what's my what what is an mpk it sounds i mean if you say it fast enough it just sounds like gibber mpk mpk i mean i don't know what it means but if you break it down into its abbreviations what is your nitrogen phosphorus potassium it's very easy to identify what that is and what you're even talking about. So it's really simple. Now again, the NPK also goes into order with your fertilizer bags. Everything is always listed nitrogen first, potassium second, and uh, pfft, I even screwed it up. Nitrogen first, phosphorus second, and potassium third. So if you ever see a bag that has a one, two, three, or a 10, 10, 10, that is 10% nitrogen, 10% phosphorus, 10% potassium. They always go in that order and that keeps things uniform so that there is no confusion. Because imagine how confusing it'd be if someone threw the potassium in front of the nitrogen. Because if you just throw a curveball like that without letting everyone know, they're gonna think it's what it normally is. So that's why everyone just typically follows the NPK rule. And so hopefully that helps you out understanding what NPK is. If you have any more comments, questions, or concerns, post them in the comments box below and I'll answer them there. Now the next word is plug. What is a plug? Well, you can plug something into the wall. You can give a plug on a advertising, you know, I'm plugging for something. But when we're gardening, a plug is actually a, basically a starter root ball with the dirt. So if you have a plug, you can have a 72 cell tray. The 72 cell tray is what we call a seed starting tray. And if you pull the plant out of the seed starting tray, you have a plug. Because imagine you are plugging the, the plant into the earth. That's kind of how I like to think of it, is you have a root ball with some, some soil and that is attached to a plant and it can't grow inside of that little that little cell, that little starter cell for long. So we have to plug it in. And so we're gonna take the plug and pop right into the soil and it's going to grow for you. And that is why we call it a plug. Really simple, it's honestly that. There's nothing more complicated about it. Now the next term is root bound. You might have a root bound plug if you let it stay too long in the starter tray. And basically root bound is basically how it sounds. It's bound up roots. If you have roots that are coiling around and around and around and around and around and around and around some more, you probably have a root bound plant. That typically happens in starter trays, but it can also happen in the soil. If you have really heavy clay soil and you dig a tree and you make the hole pretty small and circular, you're going to notice that the roots can't get out and penetrate through that soil, so they'll just coil up and the plant will be stunted. This is because the roots get root bound and you don't want that to happen because it does not allow for the, the, the roots to find more nutrients and more water, 
So you're going to have a stunted plant solely because of the fact that they can't go out and find something. So again, a root bound plant is just a plant that needs more room to spread out. If your plant is root bound, give it a transplant or make sure that your soil is, is loose enough so that the roots can flow freely through and you won't have a root bound plant. And the very last word is propagate. So propagate sounds a lot more complicated than it is. A lot of people say, I propagated some seedlings. Well, if you remember the word germinate, propagate is also propagating. Uh, basically, you can propagate some seeds and that's to, to root or to sprout. So if you're propagating seeds, that's basically sprinkling some seeds in and you could also interchange the word germinate with propagate, basically the exact same word. However, it can also be used for rooting a cutting. A lot of times people take basil or mint or even they can take tomato cuttings. Any type of cutting you can propagate by basically sitting it in some rooting hormone and the cutting itself, a already existing plant, will sprout new roots. And it's something that for a long time we were baffled by. However, um, what we're starting to learn more is that anything can be propagated. Some things propagate a little harder than others, but for instance, if you take a cutting of a rose or a cutting of a blueberry or a blackberry or anything for that matter, when you cut it and stick it in some rooting hormone, the plant will already know, okay, I have moist enough conditions to sprout some roots, why not? And so it'll start taking advantage of those conditions even though there are no existing roots. It's a wild concept. However, it's a great way to get some free plants. So I would recommend using this word to your advantage and propagate some cuttings. And so you can definitely look up on some videos on how to propagate some cuttings. I have a couple of those videos. I'll post a video to how I propagate some basil and mint in the description box below. Super simple. Oh, and I also have some tomatoes on there as well. Those are the three big ones that people propagate, but you can also propagate things like blueberries, like I said, or blackberries. Very simple to do. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the gardening terminology part two. I definitely recommend staying in touch uh, for part three. So definitely click that subscribe button if you haven't already and post in the comments, uh, the comments box below if you have any comments or questions or concerns about this episode and I'll be glad to answer them. Also, if you have any words, words that you're confused about, post them in the comments box below as well and I'll make sure to get to them. So I hope you all enjoyed. Hopefully this helped you out in some way. And this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you all to grow big or go home. I'll talk to you all later. See ya. Bye.